Each year, 50 brass bands descend on Bradford for the Yorkshire Brass Band Championships. You beat your nearest drivers, your next door neighbours. That's when blood will be shed. For brass lovers, it's the highlight of the year. Oh, yes, you can twiddle these up and down. Oh, it's... <gasps> it is. For the bands, it's the climax of weeks, months of preparation. You brought up with it. It's in your blood. We are going in that competition to win. Brass band is war. Along the way, tempers fray. That's not good enough. Cut that note out. But when the going gets tough, the tough get blowing. I'm a poor loser, me. I always say you never remember a runner up. You don't. Tonight, we follow four bands on the road to Bradford. Who'll be the winners and who'll be blown away? Be good at it, be good at it, be disciplined. I want to win, you've got to be good, and you've got to be disciplined to be good. From Kay, we go. The Yorkshire Brass Band Championships are three weeks away, and City of Bradford conductor Lee Skipsey is going for glory. I'm so passionate about my banding, and that's my thing, that's my hobby, that's my breakaway from normal life, if you like, that's my fairy tale, and um, I love doing well in it. In two years, Lee has transformed his band of part-timers from no-hopers to real players. How can you describe him, really? He's... Unique. He is. He's <laughs> unique. He's enthusiastic. I think that's, that's what's good. He has a very weird method of conducting. And if you actually watch him, he conducts with his fingers like this. We enjoy it because he sort of dances as, he, as he's conducting. And his expressions on his face are like, if you don't do something, it's like... And he'll go like this, and then you think, whoa, whoa, we better do as we're told. If we go on stage and do a performance and it's what Lee wants and he's happy, then that's what matters to us. I'm going to work my band to the bone because I know when they do that announcement and they say we've won, I know it's suddenly all worthwhile. To win the contest, Bradford will have to beat local rivals Horbury Victoria. They're under the baton of Duncan Beckley, an experienced conductor with a reputation for getting the best from his bands. Can't bring myself to say the name even. It's terrible. Yeah, I can consider them a fierce competition that we are going to beat. There's a few people think City of Bradford are going to win. Let's wait and see. Nobody quite knows what I've got at Holbury. I want to win. It means a lot. You know, it's something what um, goes down in history. I don't know what the band think. Go, that's better. But I know as a personal thing for me, and again, to be Yorkshire champion of anything is fantastic. Last year, both bands were promoted into the second division. Duncan beat Lee into second place, but then Lee reversed the order in the national finals. They're going to do everything in their power to try and beat us, and I have to say it's going to be all about them trying to beat us because we've got one up on them at the moment. Lee's turned the tables, and it's absolutely fantastic to turn the tables. But I intend to turn the tables back. Rivalry like this isn't unique. In Yorkshire, brass is taken very seriously. Oh, oh God, it's like a bloody fridge in here. There's been a band in the village of Dinnington for a hundred years. How do we stop this and make it work? Conductors come and go, but sisters Kay and Joan run the show. Well, I suppose I'm a bit of a saddo, <laughs> because that's what they all call me, because I don't drink and I don't smoke. I'm not a bingo fan, but I love brass bands. Which way are we taking these? It's the sound of it on its own. It goes hand in hand with, with, with collieries for a start. You know, once upon a time, every man in village had a band. And round here, you probably couldn't go any more than three miles radius without coming across a brass band. The pits have gone, but the band plays on. 
making Kay and Joan legendary figures in brass circles. I joined the band initially in 1950. I've got three daughters. There's Joanne, she's solo horn, Sally's principal cornet, and Penny's flugel player. Brass banding is an addiction. I just love the sound of brass. I don't know why, but I do. The Yorkshire Championships are divided by ability. Dinnington play down in the third division, but with the same commitment as the top bands. You can't go in for any contest thinking you're going to lose. We're always going to win when we walk on that stage. And if we don't, then they're as crap adjudicators. <laughs> I tell you now, this is not pressure. Wait till Bradford. That's pressure. Give me first note. Each division has a test piece to master. Too loud. Too loud, that one. OK, and again for me. One, two, three, four. Duncan knows it's not going to be easy. Come on. He's going to have to crack the whip to get results at Horbury. Confused all the times. OK. Well, at this time of the year, they've got to be committed to it. If they're not committed to it, don't do it. That's it, OK? 40 for the minimum. 40 for the minimum. Good. I know what's in my head. I know what I should be hearing. And I think I'm hearing it in a bit of a crude fashion at the moment. Not bad. Character is... Over in Bradford, One, Lee's working just as hard. Not bad, it's a bit... Da, da. Monday's a rehearsal. Wednesday, rehearsal. Thursday, rehearsal. Friday, rehearsal. It's still woolly. It's just woolly. With Fiat McCormick's, you sound good. And again, one, two, three, go. You should know a piece of music so well that you can't go wrong. And that just takes time, time, time. It's a big ask, but Lee's band are all right behind him. I just want to do better. It's the Skipsy effect. You yeah. want, always want to do your best. Yeah, for him. Play. For him, yeah. None of the players gets paid. They're doing it for the love of brass. Bradford's tuba player, Simon, has to fit rehearsals around his busy salon. People think it's uh, a, a bit odd, especially in here, if I tell my clients that I, I play the tuba in a brass band, they're all a bit, a bit surprised, and I think they all have a bit of a giggle. It's a tuba. Something beautiful about a tuba. Even as an eight-year-old boy, I knew that that's, that was going to be my instrument. I think the guys in the band just thought it was just a bit, a bit daft, really, in there. <laughs> but I love it. I like, yeah, I love it. It is an odd thing to do, isn't it? Nobody normal plays in a brass band. It's just odd, isn't it? It's different. It's just like blowing air through bits of piping. Uh, <laughs> it's just... Making music is just a wonderful thing. The brass band sound is such an honest way to make music, I think. It's just honest and pure and... Uh, it's very Yorkshire as well, very northern. It's a nice thing to do. Even faster, Simon. Three, four. <laughs> While Simon masters his tuba part, back in Dinnington, Jones tackling the timps. It's not as easy as people think. You've got to give me time to get from A to B or to change these. And I ain't built for speed, I haven't been for years. And... Percussion plays a vital part in Dinnington's test piece. Jones working closely with her conductor, Jonathan. Well, you've got to get it right and get proper rhythm, haven't you? I mean, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not brilliant on asking the very good. I mean, I've been at it years, but I'm not right good. <laughs> John, it's on the beat. Diddy, diddy. If you get from A to Z on this, and that's the only thing that's wrong, you'll be yeah. doing well. Yes. Nobody throws it when it goes... Oh, on, on. On. well, my auntie's my auntie, bless her, she tries. She's not a percussionist at all, but she tries. That's what I'll say. Sorry, Auntie. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, I don't know whether you, how, how you do your, your paradiddles, but just maybe not lift your sticks. The higher they go, then the slower they're going to be. Pop, 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 pop. Uh, just suggesting, though, obviously I don't play Tim, so... Um, but it just, you know, it just seems obvious. Ready from G1 and... He'll set to you, Joan, 
and, and, and others, but, but, but yeah, they focused quite a bit on me. I said, John, that was lovely, and you know there's a boat. John, it's going to be super, but we're not quite there. <laughs> yeah. You played that lovely boat. <laughs> With under three weeks to go, there's bags to do, but no one's going to settle for second. Oh, I, I'm a poor loser, me. I always have been. I always say you never remember a runner-up. You don't. Don't get all this way and then blow it. It's one chance. It's 15 minutes. It's the cup final. Lee is a great guy. He knows that we could stop them. It's two weeks till the Yorkshire Championships, and one of the biggest bands in brass is hitting the road. Grimethorpe is probably the most famous brass band in the world. People strive to, to play for a band such as Grimethorpe. Do you want to play for Manchester United or Rotherham United? Um, it's as simple as that. We're on the M62 here. Grimethorpe yeah, always compete in the top division, but they have to fit the contest around their hectic concert schedule. They play more gigs than your average rock band. The first junction off. I go with the band to every engagement. Chain bars on the M1, apparently. Chain bars on the M1, yeah. I call myself the babysitter. It's like having 30 children. Are you stupid? Don't you read your emails? To make sure they're all in bed, make sure they're all on the coach in the morning. Well, you better head north and sharpish. You got two hours to get to Liverpool. Tonight, the band will again be entertaining their fans with hits from their famous film, Brassed Off. You have to play five pieces from Brassed Off. <laughs> now, as much as we might get so fed up of playing it, that's what they want to hear. I'm sure when Frank Sinatra was live, he was a little bit brass off of singing my way. The travelling can get a bit of a nuisance, uh, but it, you're playing in front of audiences that want to come and listen to you. You're up on the back section over the I know where I am, thank you, my love. We get, you know, concerts every week packed. People clapping for you, people giving you stand innovations. Thank you very much. It's got to be good, hasn't it? It's great to be able to come here and listen to a real band playing. <laughs> I enjoyed the film Brassed Off, and they, they were in... I must have watched that ten times. <laughs> I can hold it in anyway now, you see. Does it, does it look rippling? Yes. Oh, I think it's wonderful. But, oh, it gets you all yeah. all of a glow. Ready? OK, off you go. Twiddly's going up and down the spine. Yes. Oh, yes, yeah, Twiddly's up and down. Oh, it's... <gasps> It is. Yeah. When they, when Especially when it's loud. Yeah, oh, when <laughs> it's loud. We've just told him he's got to be loud. We like for it. Loud. Us. <laughs> you wouldn't think that we'd got the same number of stood on stage that they've got. I mean, 25 grand top players and 25 dinner tips, they make twice as much noise as us. Being on stage performing is, is a great is a great feeling, uh, and as long as I've got teeth in my head, it's it's what I do. I play tuba. It's another crowd pleasing performance. They're absolutely wonderful, and I'm going to try and get down there and shake their hand. They're wonderful. We've had a, wonderful, a wonderful night. night. Absolutely Absolute. wonderful. Super-duper. Super Oof. Wow. We're all woo yes. <laughs> But away from their adoring fans, Grimethorpe are feeling the weight of history. For all their gold discs and silverware, it's four long years since they won the Yorkshire Championships. Because of Grimethorpe and the name, there's like great expectations. So, yeah, the pressure's on everybody to perform. And if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. The heat is on right across Yorkshire. 1,500 musicians will play in the contest. You need dedication, wind, and good childcare. Got three lovely children watching telly in the other room. Claire's rushing the tea down. I've got to fly off in five minutes' time to um, pick the babysitter up. Where are Mummy and Daddy going tonight, Tilly? To band. To band, yeah. <laughs> and what does Daddy do in the band? Does he do some conducting in the band? Yeah. And what does Mama play? 
But what does she play? Does she play the carnet? Yeah. Can Tilly play the carnet? Like Lee and Claire, Adrian and Panette met through music and found that a couple that plays together stays together. One of the things that attracted me to him was that when he did play solos, it was just this... I don't know, it just used to make hair stand on the back of my neck and you think, oh, and that's just gorgeous. We're like soulmates. We're not just husband and wife, are we? We're just, we're soulmates. We go everywhere together, we do everything together. Concerts, banding. If somebody wants to borrow one of us, no, they have to borrow us both. One dinner suit. Whoops, dropped the trousers. Tonight, Aid and Panette have a night off rehearsals, but only so they can play a concert. Lee wants his band ready for the big stage. It's like getting match fit for a football team. You just got to get there just at the right time as far as the contest's concerned. There's nothing like a concert to get you on your game. Oh, Can't find river dance. But the concert means another night in for Simon's wife, Nina. Beautiful. I'm not a big brass band fan. The brass band... <laughs> brass bands uh, are quite foreign to me. They don't exist in Poland. Uh, so, to be honest, probably Simon doesn't, doesn't get as much appreciation from me as he should. The band f***ed it off sometimes. When I'm always at band and uh, not at home. I know he puts a lot of effort to the band and um, he does really well and uh, I should be proud of him <laughs> and not stop him from going. With his flamboyant conducting, Lee's got the audience and his band where he wants them. They're just about where I need them to be, but they have to want to win. A bit like an Olympian going up for the Olympics, I would say. Back at Horbury, Duncan's brought his trombones and percussion in for extra practice. But first, he's got to get into his band room. It's been a long, hard week. I've been at band every night now for maybe four weeks. So that's the way it is around this time of the year. Ah! Alas, a player with keys. You've got keys, I hope. Thank you. <laughs> this piece is very, very difficult for second division. I've worked hard. All the other bands have worked hard as well. But it'd be absolutely fantastic to get that crown. Hi, uh, it's all right being jovial in the band room, but on the stage, concentrations of paramount importance. <laughs> It's now, I suppose, reality. I think they've now got to start thinking, in a week or so, we've got a contest. And it's a big one. There, two, one, two. Gents, not good enough. Not good. And again, one, two. One, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. Yeah, not good enough, though, that. Too many mistakes. I feel like sorted by now. I'm not particularly a shouter. Um, I, I think they know in my face uh, when I'm not happy. And again, they're intelligent people. They know when things are not right themselves. I'm not going to finish this. I've come too far today. See, and again, see. One, one. <laughs> Gonna be uh, a psychologist, I think. Okay, that's fine. You've got to know when to encourage and when to... Uh, to bite. Woody, Woody, no, that's not good enough. Right, take that note out. I don't want you. I don't want that note. It's, it's them that it's going back in on the three eight that'll be difficult. It's, we'll leave that out as well. Yeah, with, with the rest around, it's easy enough. No, to do. take it out for me. Take it out. All right. Not good enough. D. How did it go? I can say I don't think that was very good. Um. I kick a few backsides there, to be honest. But that's the nature of the game. I like to think that Duncan does that because he knows that I can play better. You know, I, I like to think that's why he, uh, he tends to pick on me a little bit, but you never know. One, two, three, four. 
Players don't always like being told. And I think sometimes you have to say it as it is. Uh, so Prano Carnet for Clareby. There's a week to go to the Yorkshire Brass Band Championships, and Lee is about to turn up the heat on his band. Tonight, I remind them with uh, a massive amount of passion in my eyes and running through my veins that they're going to turn themselves into the best player they've been so far to have a chance of winning this contest. So rhythm go one little, 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 little. You know you're an MF, don't you? Be with me. Be with me. Skipper is here. Down the road at Horbury, Lee's rival Duncan is determined to make it two wins in a row. I love this bit. It's all about peaking. Yes, it is. And giving that little bit extra. You know, I can't work any harder with the players I've got. But I know Lee's doing exactly the same. For either band to win, all the musicians must play their part. We've got loads of little one bits which are quite nerve wracking. So, yeah, little solo bits. Yeah. Be all right. <laughs> loose bits. Loose bits. Too many loose bits. He's a stickler for getting everything right. If he gets the results, it's good, and I think he's, he's, I think he's always guaranteed to do that. Both bands know they'll have to be note perfect on contest day. Bradford St George's Hall will be packed with one of the toughest and most knowledgeable audiences in brass. Have you ever been to a contest? You go to Bradford, you watch out, you see, what will happen is people will buy a score and they'll take a picnic with them and they'll sit there the whole day and they will do their own adjudication. They'll watch the score and they will adjudicate every band. And that is their whole day, and they love it. To an outsider, it's, you think, what? People sitting in there listening to the same piece of music 15 times. Must be crazy. Um, yeah, I think <laughs> you have to be a little bit strange to do that. For all the bands, it's a big challenge, and an attack of nerves could be disastrous. You can play it brilliant in your band room, and then when you get on stage, you only need nerves to affect even one player, and it can just tilt it that little way where you can be out at prizes. I just can't explain what it's like. When you suffer with nerves, it's really, really... You, you have a job to hold your, your mouth on a mouthpiece. It's like this on Sunday to me. It will be lovely. It will. Kay's nerves got so bad, she had to take action. If it's like this Sunday, it'll be absolutely glorious. This time each year, she picks up some stress-busting tablets. It's part of her pre-contest ritual. Will you check those uh, lockets for me as well? I will, yeah. Please. I will. started using them after we played at the national finals in 2003. Uh, I had a really bad spa uh, spate of nerves on stage, and I decided I need to do something about it. Morning. Uh, can I have a box of Natricam, please? And since I've found my magic tablets, I, I just get a little bit of a, a flutter with nerves, but nothing like I used to be. £4.7, please. Thank you. I do quite enjoy contests Thanks. now, whereas before I used to be ill the night before, I used to be being sick on the morning and it was terrible, but now I actually enjoy them. Right, that weren't too long, were it? And thankfully they've got them. Oh. <laughs> Little beauties. <laughs> Up in the first division, there's no danger of Grimethorpe getting overexcited. For them, it's just another gig, and one or two of the players don't seem excited at all. I particularly hate contests. It's not what I play music for. I don't play music to compare our performance against somebody else's. However, if you are going to take part in a competition, or a contest, you want to win. There's no better time than to do your first steps. For Sean, the contest means even more time away from his young family. You don't do all your tricks for your dad, do you? <laughs> all right. You're coming over here. You don't recognise me because of the area contests. 
<laughs> and being away at concerts. I'm your father. <laughs> Remember me? I'm your father. Aww. I'm here on uh, Wednesday nights. <laughs> I know lots of relationships that have broken down just because of the partner not really knowing why the husband should be away for such a long time. And I know bands where females have joined and then the wife's thinking, oh, you can't be going away for a weekend or a week with all those girls in the band and I don't trust you. Hey, look, you're starting again. Luckily, trust isn't an issue for Sean's wife, Suzanne. She knows there are no girls in Grindful. I think it's just bizarre. Um, but then whenever I've mentioned it, Sean always says that um, women aren't not allowed. It's just that if, if any women apply for any positions, they just haven't got them which I think is a little bit strange. If there's a seat in the band and a woman can accept the commitment of being away from home, weekend after weekend after weekend, then you're in. In fact, you'll see in the corner there, Grimethorpe Collier Band Equal Opportunities Policy Statement. Come along, girls. It just seems odd that they, they, haven't managed, they haven't managed to find one woman that's good enough. But it, it's not just banding, because it's not just banding. <laughs> when they've done banding, they're into booze. Yeah, that's right. And again, there's plenty of women that can booze them under the table. And that's another thing they probably wouldn't like. They wouldn't like women keeping eye on how much they were drinking. Brass is a marriage of player and instrument, and both have to be on top of their game on contest day. It's quite weird. It becomes a part of you. Um, and you almost build, like, build a bond with your instrument. It, it sort of fits on your lap really nice as a euphonium, doesn't it? It's, it, is, it is my baby, so I like to look after it. It's a huge, big, shiny instrument. What's not to love about it? It is important that you build that bond with your instrument and that you look after it as well, because if you get a sticky valve on stage, then you're really in trouble. I like to make sure my instrument's totally clean before I go on stage. You look after it as if it was, I suppose, yeah, if it was a pet. You give it a bath every now and again, it gets a real treat. Here's said bath. Yeah, I'll test it with my elbow. <laughs> Good look at it. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's the eve of the contest. The players have given it their all, but they know the biggest challenge lies ahead. Can Lee lead City of Bradford to the promised land? We are there to win, and I think we'll, uh, I think we'll do it. Does that sound too cocky? Or will Duncan make it two in a row for Horbury? We want to win. We want to take out Bradford again. As the players troop off, the conductors work on, still looking for the perfect score. Good opening. A few splits now. Now. Tonight, it's playback time. Tomorrow, it's war. I definitely want to beat Duncan, because Duncan's got years and years of experience, and I'm new by on the block. It's important that you, you, you pace it. It's what happens on the day. The Yorkshire Brass Band Championships have finally arrived. I bet Harbury don't polish your shoes. Bradford and Horbury are going head to head for the second division title. Lift going down. It's the hottest ticket in town. Lena's not coming today, you know. She's off to Manchester shopping. Her beloved husband's giving all these guard. It's important contest, and uh, Lena's off shopping. I've got to be really, really careful now that we get improvement. Even this morning, it's about improvement. And it's about that ultimate performance. Sometimes it comes off, sometimes it don't. But that's the way it is. The bands have one last blow to get it right. Duncan's booked out the local Masonic Lodge. Lee's in a hotel across town. Stay with me, forget the hole. Please stay with me, forget the hole. The next four bars, it starts at mezzo piano, yeah? The next bar's piano. Mezzo piano. Anything that makes me happy should be in the biggest thing in your mind. What will make my conductor happy? 
Just being with him. <laughs> well, absolute concentration now. Pace 20, please. As the bands limber up, deep in the bowels of St George's Hall, the godfathers of Yorkshire Brass are gathering for the all-important draw. It's in the lap of the gods, really. These Black Dyke. Brickhouse and Rastry. And six. Melton and Melton yeah, Mills. Yeah. This decides what order the bands will go on stage. Number 13. Scalman Thorpe. They always say the later you play, the better your chances with the judges. Ryan Thorpe. Number six. The last third of the draw is the right place to be. The death draw is number one. Hiya. Hello. News of the second division draw filters through. <laughs> Stay there a minute. Horbury will play fourth. It's not the draw of death, but it's too early for Duncan's liking. Where's Bradford? We're drawn number nine. <laughs> which we'll have quite happily. City Bucks, we've got a good draw there. We've got a really good draw. I'm very, very happy with nine, yeah. Extremely happy. I am, I am. What do you want me to say? There's <laughs> a few nerves keeping in at the moment as well. You know, but uh, we'll have to see. Try his best. It's going to be tight, this one. Third Division Dinnington are in high spirits. They've hired a coach to take them to Bradford and Joan's quietly confident about her timps. My part's fine. Everybody's panicking about it by me. <laughs> As a top division band, Grimethorpe won't play till the evening. By now, even Sean's up for it. I suppose, really, I'll backtrack on everything I've said ever and that I'm probably looking forward to winning. The contest lasts for two full days. It's a time for cool heads and calming tablets. When you're waiting to go on, you can hear the band that are playing in front of yourselves, but you've got to block everything out so that you don't let it affect your performance. And then I say... Bradford's the most intimidating hall, I think, so... They can't see me rushing around. There's times to say things and time to not, and I think it's probably the best time to say nothing now. You know, we do the talking later on now. As the audience take their seats, the bands know their every note will be analysed, criticised and tweeted round the globe. <laughs> Brass banding is all over the world, so there's people up late at night in Australia and New Zealand who are following what's happening here in St George's Hall. Yorkshire's the heartland of brass banding in the UK. It'd be a fantastic atmosphere when the real big bands are slugging it out against each other. It's like heavyweight boxers. It's a great spectacle. The stage is set. The bands know the score. And now they have to play it. To the only two people in the hall, who won't see a thing. The adjudicators sit in, in what we call a box, really. It's, it's like a tent. There has been known to be a comfort bucket, apparently, in there, because they'll be in there for hours and hours and hours. What are they doing there all afternoon? Do they nod off? Don't they nod off? We'll never know. Every time there's a band ready to go, Paul blows the whistle. That gives them the, the, the signal that they've got to start. And for the next, um, it's like a football match, really. And then the next band comes on and away we go. OK, everybody. Going to start thinking about what we're doing. Going to think about everything we've done. OK? No heroics, nothing different. OK? <laughs> for Horbury, the waiting's finally over. It's showtime. Last band's off. Come on, let's get sorted now. Come on, then. let's get rolling. On stage, Duncan has one last message for the band. Come on, do me a favour. Smile somewhere. Come on, smile. Then they're off.
Backstage, Lee can only listen on. It's a performance with passion and control. But it's not note perfect. It just had a few little troubles in the, in the middle section. I think they brought a lot of the music out, but I think those little mistakes that they made will possibly cost them. It's a rousing finale. Thank you very much. But the band know they've left the door open for Bradford. I didn't play very well. I missed the bloody note right at the beginning of my solo. I it didn't come, no, it didn't come out. So it didn't go well at all. We could have played a lot better than that. We're pretty crap, really, all of it. It wasn't that it were terrible, but it, I don't think it were good enough to win. <laughs> it's not the best we've done it by a long stretch. Um, you just thought that the other bands have the same problems, you know? <laughs> The band drowned their sorrows in the traditional way but Duncan's nowhere to be seen. Oh, Duncan just went off in a puff of smoke down the road. Duncan, Duncan's left the building. Elvis has left the building. I've no idea what they're doing, I have to relate it, if they're sad, whatever, because I, I always go, I, I don't tend to stay around. For us all, I'm not at all bothered. To a certain extent, my job is done. If we got into the top half today, in view of what's happened, I'd be delighted. And once again, I say, I take my, hand, I take my hat off to whoever the winners are. But I, I've got a funny feeling this is not going to be as cut and dried as we think. Next on stage, it's City of Bradford. I've got to try and hold things on a level, whatever's going through my head. And what is going through my head is every emotion possible. I'm thinking, come on. Come on, it's got to be there. You put a lot of hard work into it, and it's all down to that 12, 13 minutes of play and hours and hours and hours of preparing for it, and it's just that 12 minutes of uh, focus and concentration and control. And I don't want to go and come second again, I want to go and, and come first. This is the sparkling performance from Bradford, full of real pizzazz. And there was a man really in control of what his band was doing. Got a little bit too showy in places, I think, but I think they're going to be in the mix at the very minimum. What the hell just happened? <laughs> I'll have some loving for me, Perks. Awesome. Perks. Awesome. That was phenomenal. That was the performance that Lee wanted. We yes. peaked on that stage and that's exactly what he wanted. Oh. I think we played well enough to win. Now it's, it just depends on the adjudicators and what they were looking for, more to point, what they were listening for. In the top division, Grimethorpe play to a packed hall. But even the best make mistakes. I've got to admit that I did play a wrong note today. You did? Ben will tell you. I did. I wasn't right sure about it until I, I, then I asked him, did I play a wrong note? And he said, yeah. In the third division, Dinnington played to a not quite so packed hall and Joan's percussion's near perfect. She got it right today. <laughs> Hooray! Yeah, because she could have been the disaster, but she wasn't. And as for Kay's tablets... The tablets always work. Sometimes they're a little bit late kicking in, but they worked all right. And in fifth place, Dinnington. Dinnington finished fifth in the third division, and they're happy. 
up in the first division. Fifth place band, Grimethorpe. Grimethorpe finished fifth and there brassed off. But it's the results of Bradford and Horbury's section that seem to take the longest, for Lee in the hall and Duncan at the hotel. What time is it? The results have gone to me now, so... Ring. <laughs> I'd say waiting for the result after all the hard work that's gone in on a contest would be um, the most nerve-wracking for me. I don't think it's quite as straightforward, do you? Yeah. Give us a ring for you. Judges are out of the box. It, that means they're on stage calculating. I honestly do think this is going to be a tight contest. In third place was the band that played number seven, Cornerstone. <laughs> I'm sure my initial uh, reaction to look at was, there we go, that's second and that's great, and we've done well. Um, through my head was, should have been first. A lot of people are extremely surprised, you know, they thought we were the outright winners, end of story. We should be really, really pleased with that. But I suspect with a lot of players in our band, but uh, there's that little feeling of, oh, if only. Yeah. The Yorkshire second second champion band for 2012. Oh, results. And the winners of the it second have, section it? Yeah. is Clifton and Lightfoot. After all the fuss about the draw, the second division is won by the band that played first. And it means Horbury are out of the prizes. Is that the result? Clifton, Bradford, Cornerstone. But we're obviously not in the top six. Yeah, oh, is that mine, Mark? Thank you very much. Well done. So Thank Lee picks up the runners-up trophy and Horbury head home empty-handed, minus Duncan. When they said City and Bradford have got second, the three bands next to me were saying, you've got it, you've got it, you've got it. I'm slightly disappointed we didn't do well enough to get a mention in the top six. Did you? Well... But... No, come on. <laughs> we, we tried as best. Um, they've all tried the best. That's all you can do. You've got to accept the result and move on. While all the winners take their bows, the runners-up can have a well-earned rest. We're going to have a week off. So that's two rehearsals where they don't have anything off. <laughs> One whole week. <laughs> <laughs> the losers can learn from the judges' remarks Bad luck, trombone, it happens to us all. <laughs> <laughs> and for everyone, there's always next time. All ready for next year. All ready and raring to go.